What is crankshaft NG? Let's find out. According to the website, Crankshaft NG is a turnkey solution for the Raspberry Pi that transforms it into an Android Auto head unit for your car. Android will display your apps on a gorgeous 7 inch screen and gives you a car optimized interface. Crankshaft helps you drive distraction free. It is designed to be easy, fun and affordable project that you can finish in a weekend morning. Currently it's an alpha level software. So nope, it's not an official or even related to or certified by Google or Android. It's totally a hobby, but we hope you can give it a try and have fun with it when it's safe to do so. Now this is only limited to Android Auto and cannot be used for Apple CarPlay. For that, it's actually something else. So in the meantime, let's dive more into it and see what this is. Now Crankshaft is built using Open Auto. This version is called Crankshaft NG. According to one of the original devs, NG stands for Crankshaft Next Generation, and it aims to improve a lot of the original shortcomings. This open software allows users to build their own car head unit with a full range of customization, using a Raspberry Pi and any touchscreen size they want. So I came up with this list of stuff, headed over to AliExpress, and this is what I got. So I bought this Raspberry Pi 3B, a USB cable for it, a car display mount, this 5 inch LCD touchscreen. Now, the crankshaft said it's supposed to use a 7 inch touchscreen, but I wanted something a little bit smaller. As I built it as a non permanent solution to Android Auto, I wanted something that I could repurpose later on without having to rebuy none of the display. I also purchased this 3.5 inch touchscreen that works on the GPIO pins for another project. I would highly suggest going with a display that is not the GPIO via HDMI. If you decide to buy that cost one, massive we'll go ahead and fix users. it later on. And whatever you do, do not forget an SD card. Just don't get one from AliExpress. Anything at least 8 gigabytes is good. And we've got all of this for the low, low price of around 70 to 75 USD, depending on sales, taxes, and shipping. But we don't have things like a microphone or an ambient light sensor which you could go pick up while you're here for as little as a few dollars for the microphone and light sensor. Now I've not purchased either of these, so I'll not be integrating them into this build. As the video was getting long, I'm just gonna skip to the initial boot so we can see what it has to offer in its stock OS state. For those who wanna build this yourself, stay tuned for a video tutorial, outlining installation, setup, and possibly bug fixes. Now, the initial boot sequence is going to take a while, and that is because it has to go through the entire setup process of building the file system. And then once we get this configured, we can get on with testing. Now, AliExpress does sell 7-inch screens that have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay built into them. I am unsure as if it's strictly that, or you could kind of plug it in and use it for other things. But yeah, so for like 50 bucks, you could probably get a 7-inch Apple CarPlay Android Auto screen, and you're good to go. You don't even have to build one of these. But with these, it was more of a non-permanent solution to have something in your car, as well as being able to use it for other functionalities after. All right, so it finished booting up. Now we can see what this crankshaft is all about. So here we have our power to be able to turn it off, restart, go back. Then we have this little eye symbol, which brings up this different interface with the background. If we hit the eye symbol again, it brings us back. Then we have this, which actually just sets the brightness of the screen. If we hit this, this is our music icon, so any music that we have on the SD card for the Pi will show up here. Here's our settings, here's our volume meter. The only thing I don't like about this, it's all touchscreen and no physical knob. You could probably buy a physical knob for it, put it on the GPIO and it'll be fine. That lagginess is not the screen, it's actually just me missing the... Uh... All right, it's a little bit of that screen. Then we have this little moon symbol, which is supposed to change it from night and day. 
Sometimes it works. If you get the ambient light sensor, it should work. And then here in settings, we have a lot of different settings to go through. We can have if we're left hand or right hand drive, we disable that safety warning, different clock menus. And then we have transparency and GUI, brightness of day and night, auto play, instant play and show player. Hit save every time you edit a setting just so it saves to the configuration file. If it doesn't save to the configuration file and you reboot and it still didn't save, go ahead, unplug your SD card, plug it into the computer and just override it there on that configuration file. Next we have video, it's gonna be 30 or 60 FPS, always hit 60 FPS. Most of these screens can handle 60 FPS. Make sure you hit 1080p. If it doesn't save as 1080p, we'll go back and we'll save it later. And then the Android Auto Screen DPI. You want to match the DPI to the screen, but because you mean you're gonna be staring at this thing, I would just uh, max it out. And then if the screen is just being out of bounds, you actually manage that here. Moving on to audio, we have our speech channel and our music channel, as well as QT and RT audio for our audio backend. Here we have. Our output, which defaults to the headphone jack. This is if you have a microphone for input, I would suggest getting one. Playback volume, I would just max that out. And then we can move on to input. Now input, you wanna make sure that enable touchscreen's on. It is relatively on by default, right? Show the cursor, that's only when you plug in a, uh, a mouse. And then everything done here is all the different button controls you can use with Android Auto, as well as the media playback. If you have like a keyboard or something you want to mount and use it as pretty much a keyboard shortcut. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you set your country code here. You can also have it so it runs in hotspot mode or client mode. Client mode, just when you plug in your phone, will take your phone's internet and use it that way. Bluetooth, we can set parable after 120 seconds. Now we do have to enable Bluetooth in this setting, but that's for later on. And then this is just how it sets up in hotspot mode. Here's your IP address that it will use. It's SSID that it pans out and then it's default password. That's how you use it in headless mode for your Android phone. CS base just pretty much shows us all the different settings and its system information, such as our screen timeout, our shutdown timeout, the screen orientation, any kind of animation you want on a boot, as well as the CPU temperature, build number, version, and CPU frequency. Again, you can monitor your CPU temperature here. Highly suggest getting a fan. Here's your GPIO settings. Make sure those are enabled if you have the custom hat. Here's our custom brightness command, which is currently disabled because we don't have an ambient light sensor and we just did not disable it in the default settings. Auto stay day and night for time. So based on time, it will start day or night. And then here we can set the current time, the time zone and all the different information. Like if you have your ambient light sensor, you have Bluetooth, which you can select built in or external. And then anything like a Raspberry Pi camera, USB camera, anything else for like a backup camera. And then hit save. And that's pretty much what it gives in its stock form. It's a lot, but we still have more to do. Plug a Raspberry Pi into an ethernet port and hop back over to your computer. The reason we're using ethernet is so we don't have to try and get the Wi-Fi to work and connect that way. Here is my janky setup. Kind of a mess right now. We have the crankshaft, the three and a half millimeter jack and the power cord. I have a fan blowing in here. So if we go here, it's sitting at 48 degrees Celsius, which is kind of interesting because that fan should be blowing in there. Going to this, this is a Bluetooth transmitter that has a headphone jack on it. Now music will actually default playing through the headphone jack of the Raspberry Pi. I'm still trying to figure out if we can get it to play via Bluetooth, but currently that has been unsuccessful. Currently, the crankshaft will only pop up via the Wi-Fi hotspot for connection. To run Android Auto via Wi-Fi, you have to enable the developer settings on your phone and change it to a wireless head mode. Just shut off the server every time you're done. I'm unsure how this actually affects battery life, but better pretty safe than a dead battery. You can also plug in your phone to the Pi for the connection. Just a fair warning, the charge speed is slow, so you may gain or lose some percentage in use. Also, turns out that music is also broken. And... Appears you have to use it with an external USB stick, but people have also had trouble even getting that to work, and this thing's from five years ago. Some people say you need to make the USB stick called CSS storage in all caps. Other people say you need to make the music folder inside of it all caps. I've tried, haven't gone anywhere. Maybe when we come out with the tutorial, I'll find a fix then. Now, not all the phones are actually compatible with Crankshaft NG. It has more to do with the open auto bugs than it does with the device. So. Just a fair warning, hop over to the compatibility link down here and just take a look at anybody else's bugs that they are having. Speaking of bugs.
So those are some bugs that I found with the uh, crankshaft software. I'm still trying to figure out how to connect Bluetooth to the crankshaft instead of using it to the three and a half millimeter jack. Because once I can do that, then I can actually add a microphone to this thing and get the Google Assistant to actually pop up and read these. All right, this is more of just a, the fact that it, you can just hear how loud it is. I don't know if I can pick it up on the microphone, but right now it's just a high-pitched squeal. If you decide to turn off the audio, it goes away. It, it, it's very, very bright. You can't really see how bright it is on camera. But if we just play this message real quick. Emily said, I started adding some diagrams. But if I was playing some music, if I can do real quick. So there are some bugs with this. I don't know if you can hear if I just turn the volume up. That is caused by the headphone jack coming out of the Pi. The DPI likes to reset itself for some reason, even when you hit save. When you turn it off, it never saves it in that crankshaft script. Just kind of force it over if your DPI does that. TFT screens seem to break the software in the sense of a lot of people are just having these issues. Again, these are more software issues. I'm not bashing on the whole open source thing. It's just it happens with the open auto, which it's built off of. Really, really quick thing I wanna bring up. AliExpress does sell other card displays as a full package for less than it took to actually build this. I believe they do come with a mount and charger as well. So I would actually take a look at those, see what the reviews are on them. And that might actually be a better alternative to actually building yourself compared to this whole crankshaft software. And those mostly run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. I don't know if it's specific, but I would actually take a look at those as, again, those are in some cases cheaper than it is to build your own. The only thing is, I don't know if you can sideload a different OS onto it. I don't know if it's running how the crankshaft is, like a former Linux. It's just another alternative way. We get a few nice features. There's also a screen timeout for the main screen like this, which I like. For iPhone users looking at this, you made it this far, so I'll give you an answer. According to the forums, you can get Apple CarPlay to work via the USB dongles people have made to plug into the Raspberry Pi or any other heads up display. Of course, it's not the best method, but it supposedly works. Now, I have not bought one of these USBs, so I can't say for sure, but give it a try and let me know down in the comment section below. All in all, fun little project to do. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that like button, and I'll see you all in the next one.